In a previous video, we wrote some PHP code that allowed us to connect to the database and then enter records into the user table. So now we have this form to register users. So now, if we upload this form to a remote server and then send people to this form through links, then they would be able to register themselves or sign up or create an account to where they could use the applications that we are going to create. But this form has no way to activate the users. And if you remember, when we created the table in PHP MyAdmin, we created a field called active and set its default value to zero. So anybody who registers is going to automatically be not be active. Or we can create the functionality so that we can allow one user to activate all the other users so that they can use our applications after they log in. But in this video, we're going to create the login form so that they will be able to log in. So back in the code, I'm going to save this register.php, call it login.php. And now I'm going to open up register.php. Okay, see this code here? We have this connect code, both in register and login. So let's cut all that. Create a new file called connect.php and put that in a new folder called includes. Call that connect.php. It's going to hold all our connection and we're going to include it. Okay, so now we have all our connection code in one file. We can cut all this from our register and login and create a PHP tag. And then we're going to include it. So we type this statement called include inside quotation marks. So it includes connect.php. This is going to include all of our connect.php Okay, so now we can copy all this, put it in our register.php. So now both of our files, register and login.php, are connected to the database. So we do not need this connect.php anymore. Let's close that. And let's go to the login.php and make some of the changes. Let's change the title, say, login. We don't need that code anymore. We're going to write some more PHP code. Let's change the header to login. The action is going to be login.php. So we don't need this password confirm anymore since we're already registered. Let's take all that out. Now the value, let's change that to login. Okay, so let's go take a look. We don't need our email either. So let's go back and take that email field out. So the name of this field is going to be login submit. Okay, so let's go and copy this. And up here, could be anywhere, we're going to create some PHP. I'm going to say if is set the login submit button, but it's a post. Okay, the colors, color coding is wrong because I don't have my PHP tag. So my PHP tags, see that it changes the color coding, which I, that means I it's right. Okay, so in curly braces, what we're going to do, we have to declare the variables, but we already got some of these variables declared, like the username. So we can go to the register and copy the username. It's already got the MySQLI real escape string on there. And now the password, scroll down here, 
to get the password. That's before it's encrypted. So now we need to get that encryption code because we're using the same algorithm. So all this stuff, we'll copy it. Okay, so what we have to do now, instead of, we're not inserting, we're checking the database, we're gonna to have to do a select query. Do you remember the R in CRUD? Okay, so let's declare a variable with a dollar sign. Let's say login underscore Q instead of equal to, this is select, star, which is the asterisk from users, the table, where this is a where clause. We're looking for a specific user where the username equals the value that's inputted in the input, the dollar sign username. That's got to go inside quotation marks. But we're also, we're selecting the password. So we say and password that's the field in our table. Equals dollar sign password in quotation marks. That's our value in our input after it's been encrypted. So now we create a result variable and set it equal to MySQLI underscore query. That takes the connection and then our statement, an SQL statement, which is right here, login queue. Now, just in case there's an error, we want to die or end the script and we want to show an error. So in quotation marks, we'll just say error, checking user or something. And then we call this other function to give us some kind of an idea of what the error is. It's MySQLI underscore error. And that again takes the connection. This connection is what we created in the connect that is included now. Okay, semicolon and look at, we need to fix this right here. That's gotta be a period for a concatenation. Okay, so next we can declare another variable called count. And it's kind of like what we did before. We get the MySQL I underscore num underscore rows, and we take the result of that. But this time we set it, we determine whether if it is equal to one. So we'd say if count equals one. So if the count, which is the result of our query statement equals one, that means there is one record that matches our criteria where username equals the username entered in the form and the password after it has been encrypted equals the password that was entered when the user signed up. So in other words, the user did type the right password. So if this is true, inside curly braces, we're going to call another function called session underscore start. A session temporarily stores variables on the server, but not in the database. The session start function starts the session. We will see how this works in the next video, but for now let's declare a variable. Dollar sign underscore session. This is a global variable. So we're going to set it equal to the username. And now we're going to call another function header location. This will send us to another page, in this case, index.php. Now, if count does not equal one, or in other words, the user did not type the right username or password in, we want to echo a string. Now, if we want to see this string, or if we want to make it visible, we got to put all this stuff inside the main tag. So I'm going to cut this main out and put it above the code, the PHP code. Now to make our header function work, we need to turn on output buffering. So we call the function ob underscore start. Output buffering is beyond the scope of this course. Just know that we have to have this function in order to make our header function work. 
So let's go and try this out. I'm going to use the username Eddie3 because that's the encrypted password. I'm going to just delete these other users. Okay, so Eddie3, pass ant word, and now we're in index.php. Now let's go back to the form and see what would happen if we typed in the wrong username or password. And we get the message. So our code is right, but we still have some work to do because look what would happen if I typed in index.php. Now I'm not logged in, but I can still get to that page. So in the next video, we're going to create the functionality so that the user must log in and start a session before they can get to this page. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.